I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Are you Shepard, kidding me? No one else encountered the hologram on Ilos that told you the truth about the Reapers. Only you and your crew ever spoke with Sovereign. I believe you. But without evidence from another source, the others think Saren was behind the Geth attacks. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. Today's episode is going to be pretty big. We are potentially going to recruit two new people to our squad, and we're going to one of the best places in the galaxy, Omega. And I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. So I wanted to just say a huge thank you to those of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday around 2 p.m. Eastern, I sincerely appreciate you guys. And if you ever want to hang out with me on Twitch, link is in the description below, twitch.tv slash online. and I hope I see you guys in the chat. So, let's jump into it. We are level 7. We are a Vanguard, of course. Uh, and I do have points that I could put into Assault Mastery, which probably isn't the worst thing. It's a 5% upgrade to pretty much everything. Uh, and it increases our Renegade by 30%. So, we're going to actually, we are going to spend that point uh, those points i was saving it to get charged to be uh, uh my heavy charge uh but we're not gonna do that we're we're gonna go with assault mastery and we're gonna keep the charge that we have for now and you know i might end up regretting that but we'll see so we're gonna use the galaxy map and uh i did do some scanning off off of the video uh so so i'm um, you know i'm kind of swimming in resources right now but as you can tell, we have three dossiers that we can go do in Omega right now. We can recruit Archangel, we can recruit the Professor, and we can recruit the Veteran. So we're going to head to Omega. Look at this place. So cool. Built in the mined out husk of a metallic asteroid, Omega has been a haven for criminals, terrorists, and malcontents for thousands of years. At times, the station has lain idle and abandoned for centuries, only to be reactivated by a new group of outlaws seeking a fresh start. The space station's original, elegant design has given way to haphazard expansion by scrabbling factions of every species. There is no central government or unifying authority on Omega, and nobody can recall a time there ever was one. Although, there kind of is one. There's a population of 7.8 million people in this <laughs> nightclub. Uh, so that's pretty dope. Uh, the cool thing I want to do, I do, I do want to mention this because it's kind of been set up as we've been playing, but we are actually in the Terminus systems. And if you remember in Mass Effect 1, the Terminus systems were like a no-go. You couldn't go there. It was bad. It's not Alliance space. It's not Council space. Uh, you don't go there. It's bad news bears. Uh, so Omega being in Terminus space is probably not going to be the a land of law. That's... That's for sure. We're about to meet some of the best characters that Mass Effect has to offer, though. Uh, legitimately. And that's the real power of Mass Effect 2 compared to Mass Effect 1. Yes, there are great characters in Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 2, though, man, it's where it's at. So, uh, it doesn't actually really matter what we do for our team right now. So, we are actually going to pick uh, Miranda and Jacob for this little bit here. We can see what they have. They're all good. Yeah, they're fine. Ah, welcome to Omega. You're new here, aren't you? I can always tell. Allow me to... Oh, hello, Mocklin. I was just... Leave, Varget. Now. Oh, of course, Mocklin. Whatever she wants. Hmm. Blasted scavengers. Welcome to Omega, Shepard. You know who I am? Of course. We had you tagged the moment you entered the Terminus systems. You're not as subtle as you think. Aria wants to know what brings a dead specter to Omega. I suggest you go to Afterlife now and present yourself. Yeah, how about this, bud? Relax. Cut the attitude. I'm not here to cause problems for Omega. Things explode around you, Shepard. You can't blame Aria for keeping an eye on you. That's true. Afterlife, now. Uh, I'll go when I'm damn ready. I'm receiving quarantine about the slums where Dr. Morton Solis runs the clinic. Anticipate resistance at the transport station. I have also accessed messages between mercenary groups regarding plans to deal with the Archangel. There's a recruiting station at Afterlife that may have information on him. 
Interesting. So the two reasons why we're here, theoretically, is that we are going after the dossier for the professor. Dr. Morden Solis is a Solarian biological weapons expert whose technology may hold the key to countering collector attacks. He's currently operating a medical clinic in the slums of Omega, which is why we're here. He's a biological weapons expert, light weapons training with Solarian special tactics, uh, special task group, which we actually met Captain Kirahe, who was leading a Solarian special task group, uh, group <laughs> when we were on Vermeer. The interesting thing here is that he may be the key to countering the collector attacks. Remember that when the collectors attack these colonies, there's no fighting. They just, people just, I don't know, get put in a pod. Something's happening. And uh, Dr. Morden Solis is probably the only one who's able to figure out exactly what that is. And then we also have the Archangel. We know nothing about this guy except that he's an Omni Tool expert and a noted sniper and a small unit tactical expertise. It's a mercenary commander who, uh, they, I guess, it says he's responsible, so whose operations are noted for their technical expertise and strategic brilliance. He was responsible for high profile attacks on gang leaders on Omega and can likely be found here. Who do we know who's a noted sniper, an omni tool expert who also does calibrations and is a small unit tactical expertise? Hmm. Who could that possibly be? So now you know why it's like, what order do you do this damn game in? I tell you what. And then we have a Dossier, the veteran who we're actually about to meet right in front of us. He is, without a doubt, the most feared mercenary and bounty hunter in the galaxy. And he's standing right in front of us. Please. Shut it. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Oh, yeah. Please, you have to help me. No one said you could talk, jackass. You Zaid Masani? No, that's Jason Statham. Yeah, that's me. You must be Commander Shepard. Hey, we have a galaxy to save. Yeah, how much do you know, bud? I assume you've been briefed. I've done my homework. Cerberus sent me everything I needed to know. My contacts told me we're picking up one man, not two. Batarian delinquent. Pissed off someone rich enough to hire me to go after him. And for my bring him in alive rates, even. Please. I didn't do it. I said, <laughs> shut it. Tried to lead me on a chase all over the systems. You should have known better. These people always run to Omega. What's gonna happen to him? I'm gonna turn him in for the bounty. Don't much care what happens after that. What's your relationship with Cerberus? Easy. Cerberus is paying me a lot of money to help you on your mission. That's the long and short. Not many mercs would take a suicide mission for the pay. Most mercs don't get an offer like the one Cerberus sent me. This mission doesn't sound like good business, but your elusive man can move a lot of credits. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, hey, welcome aboard, bud. Good to have you, Zaid. We have a lot to do. That's what they tell me. I assume the elusive man told you about our arrangement. Nope. No. I guess he decided to leave that information out of the dossier. Good thing I asked. Picked up a mission a little while back, just before I signed on with Cerberus. Thought you might be interested. You heard the name Vito Santiago? He's the head of the Blue Suns. Runs the whole organization. Seems he recently captured an Elfell Ashland refinery on Zoya and is using their workers for slave labor. The company wants it dealt with. Yeah, we can do that. I'll make sure we get that done. Good. Get it out of the way so we can concentrate on being big goddamn heroes. I better turn this thing in before it starts to stink. I'll be locked and loaded next time you're ready to get some killing done. I like his spine armor that he has there. That's awesome. So Zaid is a DLC character in the original Mass Effect 2. You needed the Cerberus pack to get him in the Legendary Edition, baby. He just comes with us. And what I love about these DLC characters, obviously being Zaid and Kasumi, is that uh, they are 
they get your you get their loyalty missions pretty much right away and you can do whatever you want so Zaid is uh, uh someone that we can select in our party right now and you can actually see that he's got concussive shot disruptor ammo inferno grenade and then his weapons are assault rifles and sniper rifles so uh we are going to put him onto our squad right now and we're also going to take miranda i do think that this is uh one of the best comps you can actually get for what we're about to do so keep that in mind and uh let's see let's see how these guys perform i'm so excited i'm so excited let's go ahead and exit and of course we can put some points into our brand new squad mate uh we can see that he has a concussive shot a massive shot a massive blast that propels enemies with bone crushing force disruptor ammo which is rips through shields and synthetic targets very useful considering that we actually we have incendiary and cryo ammo which allows us to deal with um uh, uh freezing enemies or getting through uh, armor but we don't have anybody that that their ammo helps us get through synthetic and uh in shields now we do so that's pretty cool and i do recommend trying to get disruptor ammo uh inferno grenade is not too bad it's also locked because he is not loyal yet so like i said loyalty missions are the big part of mass effect 2 but that launches a volatile grenade that explodes on impact sending searing waves of flame in all directions uh and it's effective against armor meaning he can shut down a lot of things so his mercenary veteran here that he has increases his weapon damage and health if we actually look at that uh it it uh increases his long combat experience improves his effective health and weapon damage uh and then at, to at the top of the rank we can actually decide does he go mercenary warlord which increases his weapon damage or do we go commando which increases his health so we are going to put some points into there uh not too much because i do want this disruptor ammo actually um and what we're going to do is we're gonna, we're going to put two into all of that in fact because because i do think that that's pretty useful um it's not super useful for what we're about to undergo uh just because he doesn't really well he doesn't really have anything so uh unfortunately we don't have any points for him until we can do another level until we get another level he will get more points so uh it sounds like we need to go to this afterlife right there yo i'm down oh i'm i'm there you got you know you <laughs> You know I'm into the blue. So we can kind of check out Omega and see what's going on here. Place looks a little, uh, you know? We got a, a Blue Suns. These are mercenaries that you'll be seeing a lot of. The Blue Suns mercenaries. There's other mercenary groups that we're actually start to learn about too. Uh, which is funny because Mass Effect, Mass Effect 1, you just kind of are like, so there's, there's these, there's these guys here. Omega. What a piss hole. Yeah. At least it keeps you on your toes. I've had to come here on business before. I feel like I need a shower afterward, in addition to normal decontamination. Yeah, I feel like decontamination probably does it, but I, I get the idea of needing a shower. I've been to places like that before. So Afterlife, obviously, is where we need to go. I love that there's an Elcor bouncer. I wish that we could see Elcor's fight. I wish that we could play as Elcor's. I always wish that... Uh, the multiplayer that isn't in the Legendary Edition, but used to be in the other games, uh, in Mass Effect 3. I really do wish that you could play as an Elcor in that. You can't, by the way, but, uh, I wish you could. So, these are different areas that lead to apartments and marketplaces, and, uh, we could actually go there. Uh, we could open our map and see. We could go there and not actually go to Aria right now, uh, if, if that was what we wanted to do, which... I mean, I don't see why not. We don't have a lot of credit, so spending anything is going to be a little rough. You can actually hear news happening as well. There's a mad prophet here. Oh, yeah? Us? What? Protheans cast off the lesser races, the Krog, the Vorger, and the humans. And so they dwell in filth, on worlds made of dirt, of feces. And there they lay until they stumble into the skies. The lesser races will be our downfall. The word is clear. What are you then? Let none in my sight continue to live, lest their impurity displease me. The word is clear on this, friend. Humans are the hands of the Reapers, here to commit the galaxy to ruin! You're crazy. What if he's not? 
I cast you out into the cold flash for extent. I name you unclean. He also noticed, uh, if you noticed, he said something about the Vorcha being a lesser species. That's not a race that we know anything about. This shall be the beginning of the end. On this station, huh? Restore your souls to glory! Shoot! Uh, well, you know, he is not, he is definitely not a fan of us. So there's more blue suns here as well. We can just kind of walk around and see if we can get any uh, things happening. We do have Herod's Emporium here. We can go ahead and uh, talk to accepted. my favorite, Elkhorse. Welcome, human. What can I get for you? What do you have? What kinds of things do you sell here? Friendly, salvaged parts. All kinds. Look at his cigar. Mostly it's just floating. Liquor. It's not in his mouth. It's just floating there. My prices are the lowest anywhere on the station. You won't find salvage cheaper than mine. I have things to do. Courteously. All right. Well, let's see what we can buy. So we can buy actually a Geth ship here, and we have a visor that we can grab, which increases headshot damage by 10%. Uh, and there are other things that obviously we're going to have to come back to get, like Terminus armor, which is pretty damn hot. Uh, and this Black Storm, which is actually a heavy weapon that we can use. Uh, it only costs 5,000. I believe that also comes in the Cerberus pack, uh, but we can't obviously grab that right now. But you can see this Terminus armor, how good it is. Increases storm speed, that's your sprint, by 10%. Increases shields and increases all weapons reserve ammo by 10%, which, and it looks dope. So uh, this doubles the time limit for hacking, which is pretty useful. And then uh, the, it reduces the delay before your shields start regenerating. So... Uh, these are things that you can buy. In fact, we are just going to buy the uh, the model ship here because we can. Make sure that our cabin is as awesome as we can get it to be. Then we also have Mars here. I might have something here for humans. Not much. And we can charm him into convincing me to shop here, friends. I'm in the mood to spend some money, but I think I can find better stuff elsewhere. You won't find a better selection anywhere. Unless you're willing to risk the black market. I'd rather deal with you than give money to those thieves. You sure we can't make a deal? Look, I can't compete with the black market. I have to make a profit. I'll do what I can. But don't tell anyone or I'll lose my shirt. Nobody wants that. I can't even imagine what a Batarian looks like without a shirt on. And we can get some more stuff here, like this titillating alien magazine. A Hanar on the cover. And I gotta say, I am so... Never mind, forget it. Uh, so there's also more that we can grab here, including probably the best armor in the entire... It is the best armor in the entire game. The Blood Dragon armor increases power damage by 15% and increases shield strength by fifth, uh, by by 10%. This is one of the strongest armors that you can get for Legendary. And as a Dragon Age fan, which uh, let me know in the comments below if you've played Dragon Age and if you enjoy it, uh, Dragon Age, one of the best RPGs ever made. It's so good. Uh, and, but we'll go ahead and we'll grab the Turian Cruiser for now, and we'll get that. So we have a lot of shopping that we're going to have to do later. We are very broke right now, so we can't buy any of this stuff. But you'll also notice, this is when it starts getting interesting. We're going to start noticing that people seem to be in pain here. You'll see a lot of aliens laying around, kind of looking beat up. There's no one that we can really talk to. We can't overhear anybody right now. It's very strange. Omega seems a little... Like, something's definitely going on. We did hear that there's a quarantine order that Solace is dealing with, Warden Solace. And as we come down here, we are introduced to a new race. The Vorcha. My only issue with these, and we'll talk to Shisk in a second, but the, the my only issue with the Vorcha is that they feel... They're, they're, they're very cool looking. But they feel a little too villainous. You know what I mean? Hey, Aquarian! What are you doing here? Hello there. Might I interest you in some salvage tech? Every credit goes toward a ticket to get me off this forsaken rock. I'm s what are you- maybe we can- can we cut a deal? I buy a lot of parts and equipment. Maybe we can make an arrangement. Well, you seem like a decent person. But you can't bring the word of it to Harry. Of course. Then we have a deal. The Alcor? Maybe I'll at least sell something to you. Why are you here? What brought a nice kid like you to Omega? My pilgrimage. What money I had got stolen within a few days, so I decided to sell salvage parts. You can see how that turned out. Harrod's forcing me to sell high, and I can't even afford a ticket off this station. That's true. Uh, you know, I could pay your way. How much do you need to get off Omega? I still need 1,000 credits to pay my way. 
But I couldn't let you do that. This is my mistake on my pilgrimage. It's my problem. All right, tell me about Harry. Why does Herrick control your prices? Herrick made me swear not to undercut him, no matter what. He was here first, so it's his right. But no one will buy from Kinda me when it's so much cheaper. I can't save enough money for a ticket off the station. I'll have I a talk with him. Talk to Herrick for you. Get him to ease up. I won't stop you. If you can convince him to lay off, then maybe I'll get off this station after all. His shop's up the ramp, near where Marsh sells his goods. Anything you can do will be much appreciated. Yeah, all right. I have to go. Please check with my kiosk to see what I have for sale. And thank you. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. So we get uh, talk to Harriet there, and we can also browse to see what he has. He actually has quite a bit, including a pristine set of discontinued FBA couplings, which we actually need for the engineers that are down on our ship. And then there's also uh, a bunch of different shotgun damage, the Matok, uh, the Geth Plasma shotgun. Trust me, as a Vanguard, you want as much uh, as much as you can get stuff there. Oh yeah, it's good. I don't know what word I just said, but you know. Let's go ahead and talk to Shisk and uh, kind of see what the Vorcha are all about here. Tell Captain Gavorn we not kill anyone today. I don't know a Captain Gavorn. Why would I tell him anything? Do not trust you. Tell Gavorn we know his tricks. We not kill anyone today. Okay. There seem to be a lot of Vorcha on Omega. Go away. Talk too much. Gavorn's box get no more. We leave. Good talking to you. No more talk. We know Gabon's tricks. We leave. Huh. Okay. I don't... Oh. Hi. Did you just hear somebody scream and then like a bomb go off? Yeah, that's... That's Omega. Obviously, uh, this looks like it actually leads back into lower afterlife. And uh, we can actually head into the, the VIP area, but uh, I just wanted to point out that this all leads back to afterlife. So afterlife is kind of the big the big thing here. There is a quarantine zone, but I didn't approach it just yet. Uh, and we, we will, don't worry. So there's a door here as well. We can go ahead and open this. Which, like I said, actually leads into uh, the where, where we were before. Oh, yeah, that's because it... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... The other way leads into the lower, lower uh, afterlife section, which is which is where we need to go. And uh, we can actually go now talk to Harriet again. That's the quarantine area that I was just telling you about. You can see quarantine in effect showing above that. But we want to go talk to Harriet here and see if we can convince him. Tentatively excited. <laughs> Welcome, human. That's how I feel what anytime I talk to him. Hey, let's talk about the quarian. Tell if me you don't about mind. your deal with the quarian over there. Suspicious. If I had made such a deal, I would certainly not be inclined to discuss it. Accusatory. I don't understand how it is any concern of yours. All right. So, so here's the deal. Why don't you leave the quarry alone? If you and I make a deal, you let him set his own prices, and I won't break your legs. With barely contained terror, you drive a hard bargain, human. I haven't even started. Resignation, very well. I will release the quarian from his promise. Conciliatory, to show there is no ill will, I offer you a discount on my own wares. I have things to do. Courteously, what? have a fine day. Take How a was... look at my kiosk if you want to buy anything. How the hell was that a charm option? Hey, I'm gonna charm you by telling you that if you don't do what I say, I'm gonna break your legs. Isn't that charming? So this is the VIP section up here to Afterlife. Uh, just wanted to point this out, and we can actually talk to the bouncer and see what he has to say. What do you want? Let me in. I'd like to join the party. This really isn't your kind of place. Afterlife's main floor has lots of drinks and great music. What do what's, you want? Yeah, what's back Behind there? Behind this door. VIP section of the club. For those with the right name. If you want something, no, I'm just I don't want anything by. at all. Check out Afterlife's main floor. Yeah, I will like it. So, uh, keep in mind that that's a thing. Because uh, I have a feeling that we'll be going back to the VIP section once they realize how awesome we are. 
Uh, but let's go check in with Ken the Quarian and let him know the good news. I heard you spoke to Harry. Thank you so much. At this rate, I'll be off the station in no time. You know what? You're so welcome. I charmed him by threatening to break his legs, which obviously wasn't intimidating. Take care of yourself. You too. You're welcome. So here's the deal. We get 40 experience. We don't spend any credits because we didn't have the credits. We could have spent a thousand credits if we had it to actually mean? let him go. To go. Please check with my kiosk. Uh, but we do still get his his discount, even though we finished that mission and, and it's done. Uh, we do still actually get um, we still get his discount. So, you know, you can't beat that, right? You can't beat that. So we can use this door. We can head up here by using this door. We're right outside of the the Afterlife Club here. Do we have to wait in line? I don't want to wait in line. You know what? I'm not waiting in line. I am Commander Shepard. Can I go in? You let me just open the door. Oh. Well, this looks nice. Cool, cool spot. I like it. I want to hang out here. All the time, please. Looks dope. Looks like there's a veteran here named Kylan. What are you looking at? Hey! Don't you have something better to do than pick fights with people you don't know? No, just the ones who get in my face. You see my gun. Do you really want to do this? I, fine. You're off the hook. For now. That wasn't, see you around. That wasn't very charming. Commander Corey Shepard, something's wrong here. Uh... <laughs> You're not very true. So we just said, hey, Kylan, get out of our get out of our face, bro amigo. Just just get out of here. But there's also somebody out here that we can go talk to. Uh now that we talk to that Borcha guy, uh, we should be able to. And there there is another side quest that we'll be able to get later. We can't get it right now, but uh, that's why we actually have Jacob and Miranda in our party. But we can talk to this guy here. Captain Gavorn, head of the Vorcha task force. Got something to report? Yeah, so that Vorcha guy was asking us about you. There's an awful lot of Vorcha here. What are they planning? Vorcha? Plan? <laughs> They're a pestilence, nothing more. If they started planning, we'd all be in big trouble. Yeah, exactly. That's why I don't understand. I don't I don't get it. What's your job here exactly? Keep the Vorcha in line. Keep them out of Arya's sight. That's about it. Okay. I just am a I'll little confused. Going. Keep moving. Alright, thank you, Gavorn. I'm a little confused. How how are they capable of space flight if they're just essentially like space rat people? I don't know. So we're gonna head into Afterlife proper now that we've talked to everybody that we can and actually check in with this Aria who who wants to talk to us and has been tracking us since we entered the Terminus systems. Oh yeah, no, this place is dope. Hello? Daddy's home. This is awesome. This puts Korra's Den to shame from Mass Effect 1, 100%. Looks like we also have a bartender. Hey, bartender, barkeep. Let's walk around real quick. So this actually leads, this door here, actually leads to another area uh, that we can kind of come down into. And then, wait a minute, do I see <gasps> Helena Blake? If you remember, Mass Effect 1, Helena Blake was the one that had us go uh, there was a side quest. She had us go murder her, her, uh, her uh, uh, opposing mercenary groups, uh, and then she's here now. Commander Shepard, is that you? I I'd heard you were dead. I'm Helena Blake. We met a few years ago. We I did. don't expect you to remember. You removed two criminal warlords from power and persuaded me to retire. I'll never forget it. Why are you here? What brings you to Omega? What brings anyone to Omega? Opportunity, success, failure, all of the above? I find this place suits me. I can bring it a certain air of civility, I suppose. Interesting, but I told and you straight up. now you're on Omega. Once a criminal, always a criminal, eh? Oh, no, Commander. I retired. I know better than to go back on my word with you. You convinced me to turn my life around. I'm a social worker now believe it or not oh that seems like a hopeless job in a place like this quite the opposite actually this place needs it more than most 
Doing the good work in a place like this requires that one understand how things truly work, which makes me uniquely qualified. You're damn right. That's more noble than I expected. Noble? No. It's just that someone came along a few years ago and made me see the error of my ways. You convinced me that I could use my contacts and skills for things other than smuggling and exploitation. I thank you for that. It's good to well, hear. I'm glad to hear you're keeping out of trouble. Thank you. This is all to your credit, Commander. I have to go. Of course. You must have How cool is that? To do. Just that little side quest that we did in Mass Effect 1 has that interaction. Oh, it's so cool. And I also want to just head down this way just to just to kind of show off what's down here. Leads to the lower level of afterlife. Another club. We're not going to talk to that guy just yet, but we're going to dance. Oh, yeah. Are we going to dance? Yeah. 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 All right. We're done. Hey, cut it out. All right. We're done. We're done. Okay, that was fun, though. I wish we could dance like those guys. Look at it. Everyone seems to be having fun. Man, I want to go to a club. I miss going to a club. I don't even like clubs, and I miss going to clubs. Uh, hello? Yeah. This is better than Korra's Den. Let me tell you, the graphics are much improved. Let's go ahead and tip. She's like, hell yeah, you tips. You know who I miss? Liara. I don't know why I'm thinking about Liara right now, but I definitely miss Liara. <laughs> Bye. See ya. So, either of you ever been to the Citadel? Look who it is. Y'all remember Fist? I heard you were dead. I had a party and everything. <laughs> no hard feelings, though, huh? No, really. Thanks for taking the time to chase a small-time crook off the Citadel so I could squat in this shithole for years. Anytime, Fist. Anytime. So if you didn't bring Rex on the mission to take down, uh, take down Fist, Rex won't kill him. He'll actually get. He'll be able to get away, which is exactly what we did in Mass Effect One. Which means that we have Fist right now. Right, right, because you don't have planets to save and bigger shit like that. Nothing better to do than keep me down. Goddamn saviors of the galaxy. Messing with a man's living. Hey, you tried to hurt my friend Tally. I got the message last time. I work at a shipping dock, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, it's what happens when you mess with me, punk. Another room down here. Hello, friends. No one... Oh, Patriarch. Hmm. Hello. No. He said he had close family. They'll just want revenge. Kill the family first. Then he'll get angry and come at you stupid. And then you kill him. Whoa, dude. I don't think I know you. I'm the Patriarch. Arius Patriarch. What do you want? What does that mean? Why do they call you Patriarch? It's like an Asari matriarch, only male. It was Arya's little joke. After she took me down, she let me live. Kept me around as an advisor and a trophy. What do you know about Arya? Uh, a few centuries ago, Omega was my rock. When Ari arrived, she had nothing but the clothes on her back. I thought she was another dancer. <laughs> she killed half my men and convinced the rest that she could run this place better than I did. She came for me here in this bar. We tore this place apart. She crushed one of my hearts, shattered half the bones of my body, and left me alive. What made her decide to leave you alive? No, she doesn't destroy what she can use. She said I could have all my old comforts if I served as her advisor. I knew how things worked. I knew who to lean on, who to smack down, who to smile at. I 
And everyone who respected me saw me beaten, broken. They knew that as strong as I'd been, she was stronger. A Krogan as old as you must have some great stories. I killed a lot of people, lived well, and was beaten by a small Asari who keeps me around as an example. My time is done. Anyone I killed is long forgotten. The stories are ours now. So I should be going. Cool. You know, it's also worth mentioning that that indeed is Jim Cummings, the the voice of uh, of Pooh Bear, among others, as a Krogan. Big fan. So we still haven't met Arya, but we keep hearing about her. And in fact, she is such an important character in Mass Effect. It's actually kind of wild how many ties she actually does have. So we're going to use this door before we go any further. This one leads outside uh, that we were kind of already out here, if you remember. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that, you know, kind of where everything leads to. And this leads down into where we saw all the Vorcha. And they talked about, uh, they were like, hey, we don't want, we don't want nothing. We don't, you go, go away. You remember? You, you know what I'm talking about. They were like the Gorvin guy. Anyways, so we wanted, we do want to go back. We do want to talk to Arya. This is important. Back on the main floor of Afterlife, before we talk to Arya, there's something that we can do, which is get our drink on with the bartender. You guys know, you guys, listen, don't judge me. You got to do what you got to do. Let's order a drink. I love how she's such a casual way of doing things, you know? Yeah, give me that. Give me that drink. Guys, it's happening again. All right, all right, that was it. We gotta go. We we gotta go meet Arya and go see what she's doing. So, I mean, this place is just awesome. It's just so cool. I also do want to point out before we actually go talk to Arya that there is a Merc recruiter here that you can talk to as well. Uh, which, I mean, we can just see what he wants. Oh, he's busy. So, well, fork that guy. Anyways, why don't we head up here? Interesting. There's a guy named Anto here. Hi, Anto. Alright, it looks like we're gonna go talk to Arya, who is, by the way, being badass, villainous nightclub style, sitting here overlooking her empire. Yeah. We're talking to we're talking That's to Arya, man. Enough. Stand still. If you're looking for weapons, you're not doing a very good job. Can't be too careful with dead specters. That could be anyone wearing your face. I was told you're the person to talk to if I have questions. They're clean. Depends on the questions. You run Omega? <laughs> I am Omega. Oh, so cool. <laughs> but you need more. Everyone needs more something, and they all come to me. I'm the boss, CEO, queen, if you're feeling dramatic. It doesn't matter. Omega has no titled ruler and only one rule. Don't fuck with Arya. I'm in love with her. I like it. Easy to remember. If you forget, someone will remind you. And then I toss your sorry ass out the nearest airlock. Yeah, good luck with that. So, what can I do for you? I'm trying to track down Archangel. You and half of Omega. You want him dead, too? Why is everyone after him? He thinks he's fighting on the side of good. There is no good side to Omega. Everything he does pisses someone off. It's catching up to him. Just the kind of guy I'm looking for. Really? Well, aren't you interesting? You're gonna make some enemies teaming up with Archangel. That's assuming you can get to him. He's in a bit of trouble right now. What kind of trouble? The local Merc groups have joined forces to take him down. They've got him cornered, but it sounds like they're having trouble finishing him off. They've started hiring anybody with a gun to help. Sounds like that might be our ticket in. They're using a private room for recruiting. 
Just over there. I'm sure they'll sign you up. I need info about this guy. What can you tell me about Archangel? Not as much as I'd like. He showed up here several months ago and started causing all sorts of problems. If you make your own laws, which everyone here does, he makes life difficult. He's reckless and idealistic. But he seems to know enough to stay clear of me. Hmm, what groups are after him? Which Merc groups are after Archangel? Blue Suns, Eclipse, Blood Pack. They're Omega's major players. Unless they're at war, you'll never see them together. But one thing they hate more than each other is Archangel. Do you hate Archangel? I don't have time for hate, but I distrust them all equally. For now, I'm happy just to let them kill each other. Hmm, okay. I appreciate the help. See if you still feel that way when the Mercs realize you're here to help them. Okay, what about Morden Solus? I'm looking for Morden Solus. Do you know where I can find him? The Solarian Doctor? Last I heard, he was trying to help plague victims in the quarantine zone. I always liked Morden. He's as likely to heal you as he is to shoot you. Oh, I like him too then. What can you tell me about him? Used to be part of the Solarian Special Tasks group. He's brilliant and dangerous. Just don't get him talking. He never shuts up. If you really need to find him, take a shuttle to the quarantine zone. No guarantee they'll let you in, of course. Interesting. What about... Why are... What about me? One scan and we're straight to business. People are usually more concerned about who I am. Your death was downplayed, but hardly what I call a secret. I had to make sure it was really you. You could have been anyone, anything. Whatever you need will come out on its own. I'm curious, but Omega doesn't really care about you. All right, what about you? Tell me how you got set up here. That's as privileged as information gets. I have many friends and enemies I keep at varying distances. I don't count you among either. We'll see how useful you prove. Short answer? Mind your own damn business. Okay, what about Omega? So you must know what's what on Omega. Everything that's worth knowing. I don't usually give it out freely. Information is power. Mundane things you can find yourself. Take a walk in a back alley or buy one of the mercs a drink. Better yet, talk to the entertainers. They give great tours. Just don't waste my time. They give great tours. Maybe I'll come back later. Maybe I'll be here. I love Arya. Uh, if she could join our squad, I'd be a happy, happy boy. You know what's crazy to me? You do that. Well, but she doesn't. <laughs> that's that's my. Okay, all right. So there is a couple more things that we can do now that we talk to Arya. We could decide who do we want to go after. Do we want to recruit Morden Solace, a brilliant but dangerous scientist? That is as likely to heal you as he is to shoot you. Or do we go after Archangel, who is exactly who we need on our team? And Commander Corey Shepard has some sneaking suspicions. Something about this guy, Archangel, just sounds right. Sounds very, very right. So let's go ahead and we're actually going to switch our team up just, to, just for a second here. And we'll go see a little side quest that we can do just real quick. So we're going to bring Zaid and Jacob. Which, not my favorite squad in the game, but hey. Again, we're trying to push and get as much unique dialogue as possible in this playthrough. Uh, just to show you some cool little scenes. And because of that, we're actually doing things a little more... Uh, trust me, I've had to. These, these episodes are an editing mess because I'm trying to figure out the best way of presenting these cool things to you. And I'm playing the game in a different way than I normally would just so that I can get the most out of it. So a lot of our decisions are made not just based on Commander Corey Shepard, which is how we should do it and how we will do it. Uh, just, you know, anytime that I can get a little bit extra of a, of a, of a thing, we, we will do that. So... For the, for the most part. Oh. Broadcast about me. Oh, they're talking about witnesses seeing us. Whoa. Anyways, we can come down here and talk to Forvan. What's going on, Forvan? 
Let's order a drink. Thank you, Batarian guy. Just really want to get another drink because I think, I think that can be pretty tasty. Thank you so much. Oh, what the hell? Say something, Commander. Uh... What's going on here? You ought to be all right. Just take her easy. Looks like you broke the first rule of Omega. Don't order a drink at Afterlife if you're human. Uh, Afterlife hates humans? Humans aren't welcome at Afterlife? It's just that one Batarian bartender. He's got a stick up his ass about a bunch of Batarians that died a while back. No one does a thing about it, though. Humans ain't exactly held in high regard around here. Well, that guy needs to not work there. That bartender tried to poison me? Tried is the word. As far as I know, you're the first human to survive it. Me and my friend Jake went there to celebrate our new shipping business. He got real drunk. And an hour later, he was puking blood. Oof. I think I'll go give that bartender a taste of his own medicine. He won't be expecting you. That's for sure. Give that Batarian bastard what he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, going back to this, and we're gonna say, hey, hey, Batarian Forvan, there. I got a bone to pick with you, friend. He is not going to be expecting me, and I am mad. I am anger. Hey, buddy. Do I know you? No, no. Humans all look the same. Here, have a drink on the house. We're going to incite the crowd. What do you think these people will do when they find out you're poisoning your customers? Poisoning what now? This has nothing to do with you. Who's next? Turians? You don't like them either, right? Right. Answer the damn question, Forvan. You want a piece of me? I'll leave your corpse for the torch. Oh, you will. I'm not taking any chances. Well, listen. <laughs> we could have got some dialogue options there, but instead, we got that. Not bad. And because I am the way I am, uh, I. I, we, we're back. I replayed that whole section uh, because I think we can actually get some better dialogue here. And that's, that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm bringing Kasumi and Zaid here because either one of them is going to have really cool dialogue. And it's really hard. There's like priority systems of who says what in this game. So uh, we're going to go with these two and hopefully get this this dialogue. Walk it off, Commander. A little poison never hurt anyone. Perfect exactly who I wanted to say something. Kasumi will say something like, this is why I don't put strange liquids in my mouth. What's going on here? You ought to be all, so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, no get, go through this conversation real quick, and we'll let him know that he'll pay. Now, before we confront him, we're actually gonna go and put Jacob back into our party. So let's go do that real quick. Also, if we bring Kasumi with us, we can use this section here. I like the studio towns. They're prettier. They value their light. They don't have god awful neon everywhere, like Ilium or the Citadel. Just the light of people living, moving from place to place. Just enough to know people live there. I actually really like that. That's such a weird thing for her to say, but it actually makes so much sense. Uh, it, there's something about that. And I'm glad that I'm glad that I came back to show that because it's uh, I don't know there, it says a lot about her character I think she's she's so sensitive. Now actually in this alleyway we can actually if Jacob is with you you can talk to this Batarian's place. How can these people be left to rot like this? You don't understand or you don't want to. Does it really matter? No. Omega has worked this way for a very long time. No one's changing it now. Interesting. So that's just a little bit of unique dialogue you can get right now. All right, so coming back to Forvan, this time with Jacob in our party. And this time not using the charm or intimidate options. No, no, humans all the same. You're done poisoning people. 
Let's see if we can get this dialogue with Jacob. I'm not gonna drink your poison. Neither is anyone else. Oh crap. Who was you? How the hell did you survive? What are the What happens now? Why did you do it, buddy? Why the hell would you try to kill me? I've done nothing to you. My brothers were stationed on Becky when the humans came in and slaughtered everyone. No one survived. They were terrorists. They threatened the Citadel. We did what we had to do. Your people took my family away. Guess I wanted to return to faith. Well, and then we can incite the what crowd. Do you think these people and we'll actually... get him. He's going to pull a gun and he's going to take it out. Not taking any Perfect. But wait, there's more unique dialogue to show you real quick. So if we have Zaid in our party and we come over to this little section of the bar here, we can talk to Zaid. I knew a bar out on the front that looked like this. Me and some friends got stupid one night. Long story short, tempers fled, followed by pistols. We all got out except my buddy Narka. Places like this are slaughterhouses dressed as nightclubs. I shit you not. Interesting. And you know, you're you're probably not wrong. Definitely been to some clubs that are like that. And my friends, that is all of the unique dialogue that we can get at this point of our uh, our journey here. However, we are going to go ahead and we, my friends, this is a different order than I would normally do it. Normally, I would go recruit Morden right now because he allows us to upgrade all of our stuff and we have the resources for it and like, it makes the game like because we're playing on insanity it makes a little uh, some things a little bit easier but we're not going to do that instead commander Corey is commander Corey shepherd she's going to follow her hunch the archangel sounds like somebody she wants on her side and honestly reminds her a little bit of garris and she's really hoping that that's him considering that no one knows where garris went the archangel's been here for several months is a good sniper Omni tools and proficient with small unit strategies? It sounds like the Archangel is Garrus. And regardless, we know he's a good guy, and apparently people are after him right now. Morden, he'll be okay. Archangel, we need to go rescue right away. So if we come over here, we can talk to this Merc I hear recruiter. You're recruiting. Mm. Why don't you step inside? I can do that. You'll get paid when the job's done, just like everyone else. Who's next? Well, aren't you sweet? You're in the wrong place, honey. Stripper's quarters are that way. Show me yours, tough guy. I bet mine's bigger. Impressive. So, you're here to fight them? Sure, if this is the place to go after Archangel. This is the place. Standard fee is 500 credits each. You get paid when the job's done. If you die, your friends don't collect your share. You'll need your own weapons and armor. Looks like you got that covered. And no, this does not make you a member of the Blue Sun's Eclipse of the Blood Pack. You are a freelancer, period. Any questions? Why are the Mercs working together to take down Archangel? You haven't been on Omega long, huh? He does everything he can to screw with us. Shipments go missing. Operations are compromised. Every month it gets worse. Tarek and the other bosses are tired of losing credits. And men. Is he a heavy hitter? How many Merc bosses are involved in this attack? Yeah, Tarek runs the Blue Suns, but all three bosses are overseeing the operation. Jareth's leading the Eclipse and Garm's the head of the Blood Pack. Tarek's in charge, but the others would never say that. I'm surprised they're in on this at all, but I guess getting rid of Archangel is worth it. What do we do once we're there? How do we get to Archangel? The Mercs will tell you when you get there. Last I heard, they were putting the Freelancers into scouting groups. They attack in waves to distract Archangel while we try to get past his defenses. So we're just fodder for his bullets? If you don't like it, don't sign up. But if you do your job right, it's easy credits. Besides, what are the odds he can kill all of you? Um, probably pretty high. Seems like a lot of trouble for just one guy. You had a whole team, but we dealt with them. Now he's just one guy. But he's got the advantage. It's his base of operations, and he knows we're coming. He's planned for an attack like this. We've lost a lot of men trying to get to him already. It's gonna be tough to get to him. Like chasing a vorch out of the sewer pipes. But that's why we're recruiting. If we just keep throwing fighters at him, we'll get him eventually. That's... Okay. 
Where's the attack taking place? Archangel's base of operations. He's been hiding right under our noses. I can't tell you exactly where you're going, but we'll get you there. Great. Where do we go? Just head over to the transport depot outside the club. One of our boys will take you from there. Send in the next one. Good luck. Hey, is this where I sign up? Hey, buddy, how old are you? You look a little young to be freelancing as a merc. I'm old enough. I grew up on Omega. I know how to use a gun. Yeah, you know enough to get yourself killed. I can handle myself. Besides, I just spent 50 credits on this pistol and I want to use it. Get your money back. Hey, what are you... Trust me, kid. You'll thank me later. Nice. So not only were we able to get a renegade option at the very beginning of that, but w which gave us renegade points, uh, which might as well, right? And then we also got paragon points for stopping that kid, and we also got unique dialogue from Zaid. If you, if you're, if obviously if he's not there, he's not going to say anything about about that. But Kasumi will also uh, give a line there about the kid not knowing how to use guns. Blah. Anybody, anybody can use. You know, any child can play with guns. Is, is something that she remarks on. So I think that's that's pretty interesting, and it sounds like. Remember, we're not going to kill Archangel. We're going to get him on our team and uh, probably destroy all of these, all of these mercs. Now, something that you should know is that our very own Zaid, this new guy that joined us, our DLC Come character, on, he uh, he actually founded the Blue Suns 20 years ago, which is pretty wild. And that's why we're taking him on on this uh, this adventure. We're also bringing Miranda because well, we need to. This is the guy that we need to talk to, the Blue Suns driver, and. We will in the next episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't know how long it was because it was super choppy. Uh, trying to get all the unique dialogue is actually quite an adventure, uh, but I want to do it and I want to make sure we get as complete of a playthrough as possible. So hope you guys are enjoying this series. If you are, please leave a like, a comment, all that stuff. It pops these videos into algorithms out on YouTube and it really, really helps the channel, the series, all that. And the better this series does, the more I'm, the more it comes out, tell, trust me, uh, it, it becomes a, such a priority for me. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you. And remember, never give up, never surrender to the Blue Suns. Goodbye, everyone.